Good morning and a massive warm welcome to this morning's Sunday service at ECN. If we've not met before, my name is Lee Richmond and I'm one of the pastors here. And my name is Jackie Richmond and I'm also one of the pastors here and we are so excited that you're joining us for church this morning. We've got loads coming up. We've got some worship from our team at ECN Worship. We've also got Pastor Jason Heron sharing an inspiring message with us. So let's just pray together. God, we are just so thankful for your goodness. We thank you that even though we're apart this morning, that we are together digitally and you are here with us. We just pray that you'll speak to us through this meeting. In your name, amen. Amen. Just before we carry on, can I ask, like in previous weeks, please can you click the share button on Facebook so we can share this morning with many, many others. That would be great. Thank you. So let's just get ready. Let's open our hearts and minds to receive God's word this morning. in your 
There's a grace when the heart is under fire Another way when the walls are closing When I look at the space between Where I used to be and it's reckoning I know I will never be alone There was another in the fire Standing next to me, there was another in the walls, holding back the seas. Should I ever need reminded of how I've been set free? There is a cross that bears the
That was such an amazing time of worship. Let's just take a moment. We've got some church news coming up. We've got lots of things happening this week. So sit back. Here's what's coming up this week. Hi, and welcome to this week's edition of Church News. Although we still can't meet physically in our building, we're still doing a lot of things online that we'd love for you to get involved in. So here's what's coming up this week. Hi church, hope you're keeping well and safe and having an absolutely fantastic week. This is just a quick reminder to let you know that we're having Kids Church after the main service at 12 o'clock on Facebook Live and YouTube. We really hope that you can join us. Take care. Social Tuesdays are happening every week at 6.30pm. They are open for everyone to come and join, so we'd love to see you there. If you'd like to get involved, please do send us an email at admin at elimnorthampton.com or message us on one of our social media pages and we'd love to send you the information of how you get connected. Every Thursday at 7pm we hold our live prayer and worship night. It is a great opportunity to send in your prayer requests and come together as the body of Christ to lift our Lord's name in worship and prayer. You can send your requests either during the live or privately message us if desired. Hope to see you there. Right youth, we're back again this Friday for our Friday night youth meeting 7.30 to 8.30pm. I am not smacking anyone with this. This is just to help clean in the house like everyone should be doing. See you there. And if you want the code, make sure you message us on our Insta or Facebook. Catch you there. And that's it for this week, church. As always, you can check us out on our social media pages or for more information, head to www.elamnorthampton.com. Have a beautiful week. And now we're going to have a message from our pastor, Jason Heron. Get your notebooks ready, get your Bibles. Let's see what God's going to speak through him. Well, good morning and thank you for tuning in today um, on this Pentecost Sunday. This was in history where God by his Holy Spirit, fell on the early church and empowered them to be witnesses throughout the world. And God's mission still continues and he's still using people like me and you to reach the world with good news. I want to bring to you today a story from the book of Jonah so we can learn some things from him today. Let's do that together. Chapter 1 says, The word of the Lord came to Jonah. It says, Go to Nineveh and preach against it because its wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah ran away from the Lord and headed for Tarshish. What made Jonah run from the will of God? You know, Nineveh was the capital of Assyria, which today will be northern Iraq. And those who ruled the Assyrians, they were so wicked. When you read the historical accounts of their treachery, you know, it is really bad. They're so wicked, these people. They would destroy their enemies. They would have them like trophies on display. They were really, really, really bad people. Not only that, these people were going to take Jonah's people into captivity. And so Jonah not only may have been in fear of these wicked people, but also angry that God would want him to go and give these people opportunity to repent. So Jonah runs in the opposite direction. The Bible says that he, he paid his fare and he ran and he went to Tarshish. This is Spain. This is totally opposite direction to where he should be going. It's like going from northeast to southwest, totally the opposite direction. So what can we learn today from this story? Number one, 
making good godly decisions is really important. You know, Jonah made a bad decision. It messed his life up for a while, but it also messed the lives of those people that he came in contact with. I don't know about you, but I have the potential to make bad choices. I've made some bad choices in my past, and I'm surely try hopefully not to make bad choices in the future. However, I know that some of you are out there saying, tell me about it. I'm living with the consequences of the choices I or other people have made around my life. And if only I could turn the clock back. There's a story of a police who stopped a young girl because she was driving around a neighborhood in reverse and the neighbors complained. So the policeman asked her what she was doing and she said, you know, my parents lent me the car to go for a drive but I've put so many miles on the clock. I thought by going in reverse, I'd be able to turn the clock back. You know, we haven't got the luxury to turn the clock back. But what we have got is we have opportunity to learn from the mistakes that we've made. We have opportunity not to make the same mistakes again and also to help others not to make, not to make the same mistakes that we have made. Pastor Tom Mullins says, those who have messed up the most at times can teach us the most. What would Jonas shout out to us today and say to us? He said, you know, I wish I would never have disobeyed God's word to my life. If only I would have listened to God. I wouldn't have to go through what I went through and cause so much trouble for me and for those people that was in my life. But you know, I made the choice to run from God. I made the choice to disobey. You know, God sent a wind, a great wind, a violent storm that so much so nearly broke up the ship. And the sailors on ship were crying out to their God and asking them for direction while I, the man of God, was having a nap below deck. Can you believe that? I'm a great prophet of God and there I am, totally insensitive to the problems I've caused to other people. So the sailors begin to find out and talk themselves of what the problem was. They cast lots and the lots fell on Jonah. So they went and woke him up and they said to him, how can you sleep in this storm? Where are you from? What, what are you about? Who is your people and who are you? It got Jonah's attention. He said, okay, I'm a Hebrew. I worship the Lord, the God of heaven, and he who made the sea and the dry ground. And I am running away from the Lord. Can you believe that? And then the Bible says the sea got rougher and rougher and they asked him, what can we do to calm down this storm? The second thing that we can learn from this story is that taking personal responsibility is the, is the first step to restoration. Verse 12 says, pick me up and throw me into the sea and it will become calm. I know that it is my fault that this great storm has come upon you. Taking personal responsibility is the first step to restoration. Proverbs 28 verse 13, the Living Bible says, a man who refuses to admit his mistakes or a woman can never be successful. But if he confesses and forsakes them, he will get another chance. You know, it might mean that you need to apologize for the decisions that you made in your life and for others. It might, it might mean that you have to hold your hands up and say, yes, it was my fault. I made the bad decisions. It's time that we stop blaming the pagan sailors or it was the wrong boat or it was the wicked Assyrians or it was the devil or the church. No, take personal responsibility and restoration is around the corner for your life. He owned up to his responsibility. He said, if you want the storm to stop, throw me overboard. These sailors that worshipped a different God begin to ask Jonah's God if they wouldn't hold it against them if they threw him overboard and then they committed him to the sea. I want to say to you today, some decisions that we've made in our life to invite the wrong people on board of our life has been a disaster. You know, when you invite the wrong people around your life onto your journey, it can be a really bad decision if they're the wrong kind of people. You know, bad company corrupts good character. That's a sentence from 1 Corinthians 15, verse 33 in the scriptures. You know, we have to make sure that we are hooking up with the right people on our journey. Thank God that these people that didn't know God confronted Jonah with a question about his choices. They helped him to own up to his responsibility from running from God. And these men helped him to get back on track to serve God. Let me ask you a question this morning. Are there people in your life 
people in my life who will question you with the big decisions that you're going to make in your life? Or are they people who will just fall asleep on you, not willing to say anything to you and keep silent because they want to please you? You know, the people that we need on board of our lives are people that will speak the truth in love to us because they want the best for us. You know, there's a story in the New Testament, in Galatians chapter 2, the story about Peter and Barnabas. These were great men of God, godly men, heard God, did great miracles through their life. But they had the potential to be deceived and also to be hypocrites. One day, the Apostle Paul saw them doing this And the Bible says he confronted them. It says this in verse 14 in chapter 2. When I saw that they were not following the truth of the gospel, I confronted Peter to his face. He was a great friend that was not willing to keep his mouth closed when he saw his friend being a hypocrite to the good news of the gospel. I wonder if you've got friends in your life that will tell you the truth, even though it's hard for them and even though it may be hard for you to listen. Proverbs 27, 6 says, Wounds from a friend can be trusted, but an enemy multiplies kisses. You just don't want people on board your life. That would be just yes people to please you. You want somebody that when you're going in the wrong direction or about to make a decision that's going to take you away from the things of God or or it's going to harm other people, that will confront you and make you realize to take responsibility of where you're going. Verse 15 says, They threw him overboard and the raging sea grew calm. I want to say don't be too quick to throw people out of your life, but please make sure that you assess those around your life and they're helping you make godly decisions. You know, if we want to make godly decisions, then we need to make sure we're sticking to the Word of God and having godly counsel to help us. You know, when they threw him overboard, it wasn't the end of Jonah because for three days and three nights he went on a cruise. It wasn't a great one. It wasn't like an amazing all-inclusive deal, but I want to tell you, you know, God put Jonah inside this big fish and he put him in isolation. He rescued Jonah by putting him in isolation. Gave Jonah time to think about his life. In this time in your life and my life in lockdown, not only has it given us time to watch our favourite box sets, and there's nothing wrong with that, but I, I hope that it's given you time to think about your life, about your personal relationships around you, about you as a person, how you're doing, and also about your walk with God. The decisions that you may be making in lockdown, I wonder if you were to say to me today, you know, I've made some decisions in isolation. I want to say to you, I hope that they're godly ones. I hope that the decision is going to help you and to fulfill the will of God in your life. I wonder if you've been saying to yourself, I can't wait for lockdown to end because I have made some decisions. Let me be your friend today. Let me ask you a few things. Are your decisions going to help you to go towards God's will or away from his will? Are they going to help you personally in your spiritual development in the things of God and your relationships around you? Or are they going to distance you distance you, so you can be unproductive in the purpose of God for your life? Are they going to propel you into his will and his good plans for your life? Or are you going to just make decisions for your own benefit? Let me encourage you. I hope that the decisions that's going to go all in for God and his life. In this time of isolation for Jonah, he had some thinking to do. He had a few days to think about his life. And what happened inside of Jonah was about to change for his future. He had the time to think that his mistake was wrong and he wished that he would never have run from God. So in chapter 2, verse 9 says, But I will shout of grateful praise with sacrifice to you. What I have vowed, I will make good. I will say salvation comes from the Lord. It was an opportunity for Jonah to change his mind. What I want to say to you today is that the third point that we can learn, that when Jonah made the decision to repent of his sins, it propelled him into the will of God for his life. In the time of isolation for Jonah, he had an opportunity to turn from his own way and make a choice to turn to God's way. It was an internal decision. You know, before he could have a manifestation of the outward working of God in his life, he had to make an internal decision from the inside. Once he made a decision to turn from his own ways and turn to God, that's what repentance means, means turn towards God's purpose for your life. Then his life could begin again afresh. Then it says in verse 10, 
Then the Lord commanded the fish and vomited Jonah on dry land. As soon as he made the internal decision, God's future became a reality in his present. But can you imagine <clears throat> what Jonah looked like on the outside? Fish, vomit, the smell. I want to encourage you today, not really bother what you look like on the outside, but what about on the inside? When Jonah looked a mess on the outside, but on the inside, he was clean. He was forgiven by God. He was given a brand new commission for his purpose. What, a, what an opportunity for me and you today. No matter what we look like on the outside, it's, what, it's the inside, inside that matters. That God can forgive you. He can restore you. He can recommission you. He can forgive you of all your messes and your sins. 1 John 1, 1.9 says, If you confess your sin, that God is faithful and just, and he will forgive you and of all your sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. You know, when Jesus Christ died on the cross for us, he took all our sins and was placed upon him. And you know, all the good things that God had ever done through Jesus was placed upon us. What a, what a transition, what a transaction that he took our bad and put upon us his good. 2 Corinthians 5, 21 says, God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Can you believe that? You know, Jonah had time to make a decision to repent and turn towards God. The third thing and the final thing that I want to say to you today that we can learn from this, that God is a good God because he was willing to give Jonah a second chance. Chapter 3 says, Then the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. Can you imagine that on the beach? Jonah responding to God. God, are you sure you've got the right person? Are you sure I've made so many mistakes I can't live with the guilt of my failure? And God would say to him, Jonah, it's not about how good you are, but it's about how good I am. I know that you're going to make mistakes in the future, but I'm still willing to commission you and strengthen you and help you into your purpose. I have commanded you, I've commissioned you to go and proclaim the good message that I've given you to do. Jonah, I'm committed more to you than you're committed to me. And if you run away from me, I'm going to come and run after you. And I will do what I can to get your attention. I sent the storm to get your attention. I provided the fish to help you come to your senses. And now I'm going to give you a second chance. And Jonah says in the scriptures that he obeyed the Lord and went to Nineveh. He decided to run into God's grace to serve him. How about you today? And you may have been running for God for a while. You may not even know God, but God wants to speak into your life and give you an opportunity to know him, to run into all of his purpose for your life. If you are a Christian today and you've been running from God, you're making decisions that when you come out of isolation, you're not going to follow God anymore or you just want to do your own thing. And God is wanting to give you a second chance to fulfill his purpose. You know, God will forgive you time and time and time again when you commit mistakes but you know God will not always give you loads and loads of chances to fulfill his purpose in your life you know I'm not quite sure that Jonah may have had a third of a fourth or a fifth opportunity for the will of God because I want to encourage you today maybe you're saying well you know God's a good God a gracious God he gives Jonah a second chance he'll always give me another chance and you know God can wait for me a bit longer I want to say please don't take the chance with that you're not guaranteed that God will not use somebody else I would never want to think that because I said no to God a third and a fourth time that he decided, okay, if you're going to keep being stubborn, I'm disobedient. I'm just going to find somebody else to fulfill my will in your life. You know, it was Elijah that said that I'm the only prophet left. And God said, don't you worry about that, Elijah. I have 7,000 people more that's not bowed the knee to a foreign God. I can use them. I want to say to you today, please, if God is speaking to you and you're thinking about not doing his will right now, I want you to reconsider because God is a good God and willing to give you a second chance. As I finish, I want to read you just an illustration from a great evangelist called Reinhard Bonnke. His ministry started in 1940 and he went to be with the Lord in 2019 and over 79 million people made decisions to follow Christ. He started his mission, his full of enthusiasm, but then because of jealousy from other missionaries that they never had the freedom that Reinhard had, they wrote to his mission organisation, to try and stop him from his mission. The organization wrote back to Reinhardt and said, look, we want you to, to stop and not expand your ministry any further. So he was so downhearted. And so he said he went to uh, go and pray and ask God. He needed to hear from God. He said he felt depressed. He needed to talk to God and God needed to talk to him. And so he said, he said to God, 
I want to be at peace with my brothers. He said, I want to submit and I want to stop being driven by the will and the purpose that you put in my heart, the burning vision that you give me for a blood-washed Africa. And he said it was when God spoke to him that it shook him to the core because God said this to him, yes, you can do this, the Lord responded, but if you drop my call, I will have to drop you and I'll have to look for somebody else. Well, that was enough for Reinhard. He went back home. He wrote an immediate letter to the organisation and he resigned from the mission board. And this was his prayer. Lord, let everyone else drop me. But, oh, Lord, don't you drop me. Can I encourage you today that God wants to give you a second chance? God wants to use you for his purpose. I want to ask you if you're making decisions to do your own thing. Please today let God speak to you. Do whatever God's telling you to do. Why don't you run into all that God has for your life? Because God is a God of a second chance. Let me pray for you. For those of you that don't know Jesus, your personal saviour, you may have messed up your life, made so many mistakes, think there's no future for you. I want to tell you with God all things are possible. And if you would just make a decision right now in your heart that you want to turn from your ways, that you're willing to turn to God's ways, commit your life into his hands from now on, ask him to forgive you of the mistakes you've made. He will give you a brand new start and he will, he will propel you into a brand new purpose for your life. He will forgive you of all your sins and you'll be positioned as a son or a daughter with him forever. If that's you, you can pray from your heart right now. You can ask him to come into your life, a simple prayer, a cry like Jonah. Lord, I want to do your will. I want to turn from my ways and turn towards yours. And I want to tell you, God will touch your life today. Secondly, if you're a Christian and you've been thinking or been running from God for a while and God is speaking to you right now about his will for your life, and I want to encourage you to say, okay, God, I'm going to surrender today. I'm going to make a decision, no matter how hard it is, what you're asking me to do. I'm going to, I'm going to decide to follow you. I'm going to decide to obey you. If that's you today, let me pray for you. Father, I ask you right now for that person that they'll make a decision, Lord, to run into all the things that you have for them. They will make a decision to turn from their ways that is not in obedience to you and they will make a decision now to say yes to you, to do whatever it is that you're asking them and we ask it in Jesus' name. Well, thank you for watching and God bless you. I'm sure you'll agree that was a fantastic message by Pastor Jason. We've now come to the part of our service where we are going to give our tithes and our offerings to God. If you're not part of our church uh, and you're just here for today's service, please don't feel obliged to give. But it's an opportunity for us who call ourselves Christians, who call this place our home, to give financially towards the life of the church. We believe that as Christians, God has given us so much already. God has given us everything. So we give back to God as a sign of our thanks. And we do so and we give joyfully. And so if you want to prepare your offerings now, there's plenty of ways in which you can give. All of those are on screen now. And we're going to give and we're going to sing songs of thanks to God because he has given us so much already. Thank you so much. Let's worship, let's sing and let's give together today.
We've now unfortunately reached the end of our Sunday morning service. Don't forget, 11.30, it's time for our youth hangout. So pop on to Instagram. Some of our leaders will be on there ready to talk about their faith and their journey with God. Don't forget, Kids Church at 12 o'clock. So calling out to all the God Tots and the Kids Church. It would be great if you could join us for that as well. For everybody else, we miss you loads. Have a great week. If you need anything, please feel free to reach out to us. And we will see you here next week for our next Sunday service live.